Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today's bulletin will be in English. We do have Morse code today and an SSTV picture in PD50. We will start now with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News. Now, the radio propagation report compiled by Golf Zero Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha, and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday, the 15th of April. Well, um, no sooner did we say that it was beginning to look like the start of a solar minimum than an enormous sunspot appeared around the sun's limb. Sunspot 2529 has produced a number of B and C class solar flares. And despite NOAA predicting a solar flux index of around 80 last week, it rocketed to 111. Geomagnetic conditions remained unsettled all week thanks to the coronal hole activity and associated high-speed solar wind streams. The K-Index hit 5 on Wednesday and on Friday it hovered around 3 and 4 all week. Next week the solar flux index is predicted to remain around about 90 to 100 and the geomagnetic conditions are predicted to be a little bit more settled with perhaps Tuesday the 19th and Saturday the 23rd being a bit more unsettled. Speaking of which, Saturday the 23rd, of course, it's International Marconi Day, when more than 60 special event stations around the world join in on HF to celebrate the inventor's birthday. Now, you can get a nice certificate by working 15 of these stations, and Steve, Golf Zero, Kilo Yankee Alpha, has set propagation conditions for UK stations on his blogspot page. If you want to check that out, just Google G0 Kilo Yankee Alpha. 80 and 40 metres will be best for working the UK stations, while 20 metres may be the optimum for the Europeans. The east coast of the USA is a bit more problematic, with probably 20 metres or 17 metres likely to be the best bats. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. Well, this weekend, we've still got the leftovers of the low pressure and the April shower system in southeastern Britain. But high pressure is building in from the west to affect much of the country early next week. Now, this could bring some slightly enhanced tropo conditions, but only briefly, since unsettled showery weather will return after midweek. We therefore have some chance of tropo, mostly west-east paths into northern Europe during the first half of the week and either side, and April showers could give some rain scatter on the gigahertz bands. There have been a few sporadic e-openings on 10 metres, one on Wednesday the 13th from Austria to Scotland, which was caused by a jet stream over the mountains of southern Germany. Now, it's worth checking the RSGB Propagation Forum for the daily jet stream forecast charts just to see which direction the sporadic E might appear from. Look for jet streams crossing mountain ranges like the Alps or the Pyrenees. The 2016 Lyrids meteor shower peaks are the 21st and the 22nd of April, so by now we should be seeing a noticeable increase in meteor rates. For EME operators, the moon is up in the evening and overnight this coming week, but losses are highest as we approach Apogee on Thursday. And that's it from the propagation team for another week. Amateur radio is a hobby with so many aspects it can be hard to describe and difficult to know what to try first. The RSGB's new video gives you a taster of just some of the many exciting, challenging and fun things you can do. You can see the brand new video on the RSGB website at rsgb.org slash main or via the RSGB's YouTube channel. The Society will take a look at other parts of the hobby in the future, so let us know if you've got any particular aspect of a subject you'd like to see covered.
Marconi was born on the 25th of April, 1874, and amateur radio operators around the world are again taking part in International Marconi Day on Saturday the 23rd of April. The 24-hour long event has drawn participation by as many as 60 stations from around the world and Golf Bravo 4 IMD will be operating from the Stithians showground in Cornwall. For a list of confirmed stations, check the website at gx4crc.com slash imd hyphen stations. The next amateur radio contact with Tim Peake on board the International Space Station is scheduled for the 18th of April at approximately 1456 UTC and of course that's 1556 British summertime. Pupils at St. Richard's Catholic College, Bexhill on Sea, will use the callsign Golf Bravo 4 Sierra Romeo Charlie to make contact with Tim, who should be audible over most of Western Europe, and interested parties should listen in on 145.800 MHz narrowband FM. Anzac Day on the 25th of April remembers those who died in 1915 in the fighting at Gallipoli. To commemorate, amateurs in New Zealand and Australia will be on the bands using the same older modes once employed by radio operators in the military. The AM and CW event has become a popular annual Anzac Day activity with those participating using older crystal lock transceivers and former military radios. World Amateur Radio Day takes place on the 18th of April. It marks the founding of the International Amateur Radio Union in 1925. Radio amateurs worldwide will take to the airwaves to celebrate amateur radio's contribution to society. And the International Amateur Radio Union has announced that Hans Blondiel Timmerman, that's Papa Bravo to Tango, has been appointed to serve as the IARU Satellite Advisor. Now, he replaces Zulu Sierra 6 Alpha Keeler Victor, who served as Satellite Advisor since 1994 and to whom the IARU is extremely grateful for his excellent work. Hans has also been nominated as the CEPT coordinator for the WRC 19 Agenda Item 1.1, which will consider a formal 50 MHz allocation in Region 1. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. The first ever satellite to carry a D-Star radio payload into space is expected to launch on April 22nd from Guyana. The OFT-1, or Orbital Utility for Telecommunications Innovations, CubeSat, is one of three CubeSats developed by student teams under the European Space Agency Education Office's Fly Your Satellite program, which is aimed at training the next generation of aerospace professionals. The satellites arrived in South America on March 25th, followed by the student teams a few days later. Constructed by students at the University of Liege in Belgium, OFT-1 will be the first satellite to carry an amateur Amateur Radio D-Star Transponder. Developed by the Japan Amateur Radio League, D-Star enables the simultaneous transmission of voice and digital data as well as call sign based roaming via the internet. The CubeSat's frequencies are 145.950 MHz FSKAX25 and D-Star Down, with an uplink at 435.045 MHz. OFT-1 will carry a CW beacon transmitting on 145.980 MHz.
Bleep er de bleep. Kijk, iemand die uh, intelligent is, niet van internet aansluiten. Poes, hou je mouw. <laughs> jongen, jongen, jongen. Dat is ook altijd. Als ik een ronde doe of als ik uh, nieuws inlees, dan begint uh, Poes te krijzen. Dit is uh, Simone, de oudste. Nee, Simone, dat gaan we niet doen. Je hebt net eten gehad. <laughs> Op mijn podcast zijn ook diverse uh, filmpjes van uh, Simone uh, te zien. Dan kun je zien wat voor aardig beest dat is, alleen op lastige momenten lastig, maar goed, het is nogal een karakter. Dit is Papa Alpha 00 november Echo Whisky Sierra op de website, die sowieso de moeite waard is, hamgeer.wordpress.com is dat, is een test te vinden van, uh, ja zeg, wat is dit, ik kan mezelf niet eens verstaan, het zal niet zo heel hard zijn, want mijn microfoon staat heel zacht. Wat is hier aan de hand? Nou, 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 nou. Ja, wat is er? Heb je je leeg gemaakt? Is, het is wel heel erg ook. Nou, dan gaan we het even de nood ledigen hoor. Nou, hoe zit dat? Moet je nog eten? Moet je brokjes? Ah, oké, okay, oké, okay, oké. Okay. Nou, hier zijn ze. Heb je lekker? Laat de spin eens horen, kun je dat? Nou, hier zijn je brokjes, kijk. Hup. Zo, en die andere dame ook, alsjeblieft. Zo. Ja, op is het niet verantwoord.